all of you wrote your own scripts. A lot of the content uh, is about intimate relationships and sexuality, and that's there's a through line in a lot of the, the films. Where did the the idea start? Where where did you begin? Uh, I'm really interested in coming of age stories. Um, and I think that usually they're portrayed in this very idealistic way where, you know, you're a young woman, you fall in love, it's reciprocated. So I, you know, wrote a story kind of about a girl who is willing to do just about anything to form a relationship and she latches on to this kind of thuggish guy she sees at the beach and sort of devises all these plans to sort of get to know him. For me, that was much more true to the experience that I was having and my friends were having as an adolescent. I definitely feel like this being my first film, I just used it as like therapy, <laughs> <laughs> like just unabashedly. My protagonist is, they're, plagued by the affliction that, that women have taken on this um, sort of sec, you know, sexy baby kind of talk. And um, since the movie is about voice and sound, um, I thought it was um, an interesting place. I mean, not until later in the, my writing process that I was like, God, you know, that is a pro that's something I have a problem with. And it's personal to me that I would like to talk about. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, this seems like the forum. Yeah. You got a lot going on in that mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I also have a lot going on in my mind, too. Um, right, okay, I love great. the idea of finding your voice. I think that's, that's, that's pretty brilliant. I love that. It, it actually makes so much sense for this being my first film, too. The protagonist is sort of figuratively finding her voice, but also, in this case, literally. I made Austin Land, and it really felt like, for the first time, oh my gosh, my girlfriends can watch one of my movies and, like, <laughs> really love it. This was just, like pink vomit on the stage <laughs> every day. And you know, like Ace of Base playing loud. <laughs> that's what this movie is. And so if that's not a girl movie for the girls, then I don't know what is. The financing uh, was a long and painful road. I, I thought I had it several times. Nobody was interested in two young girls mm -hmm. in which nothing blew up and nobody ate anybody else. <laughs> uh, Stephanie Meyer produced my movie. Oh and shit! She is, right. she is a name with money with money yeah. signals beside her. So, all right, that's, that's honest. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have her phone number? Exactly. <laughs> I went home and I started writing the script, and then I started sending it out to like women who worked in development, um, and they just thought it was like way too dark, or you know, too dark, or much too dark. I kept hearing variations of <laughs> dark darkness. <laughs> And you know the film is called "It Felt Like Love," um, but it's ironically called "It Felt Like Love." Um, and there were a lot of male producers who looked at the title and didn't respond to their emails because I think the implication was that it was going to be some sort of like romantic movie that wouldn't appeal to them. I'd like to start just with the whole issue that you've all sort of touched on of sort of women's invisibility in film or the kind of shockingly low statistics for women directors, screenwriters, and, and only slightly better statistics for women actors. So I'd love you to sort of speak about this whole issue of will, you know, even though we're 50% of ticket buyers, is, is is this really, right, the thinking that people's who eyes that? are trained? Yeah, who Anybody have you a read pen? this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you want names, right? If you want women to make movies more often, women have to go see them. And they have to understand when they have to go see them to support them and they have to go in droves, and they have to say they want to see them. Yeah. I mean, that's really what has to happen, because it's so tied to the economics that unless we provide them with concrete evidence that we are going to be an economic purchasing group, they don't care about us. Whether you go or not, think of it as like a contribution to a Kickstarter campaign, right, or yeah. that you believe in, you know, because, because those numbers matter. So all those little films, opening weekend, go online, buy a ticket, whether you go or not, you can go later or watched on DVD, but buy the ticket because, yeah, you're right, Mary, it really is the economics. Women want to see up there on the screen people like them going through stuff like them. I think, I hope, that what we're all doing up here is going to connect with you know a generation of younger women seeing themselves up there. <laughs>